Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to the next episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomichev, and I'm a Psycho Technology MVP. In this episode, I'd like to talk to you about Psycho Parameter Templates. Actually, I wanted to record the video about a different topic. However, earlier today, I ran into another developer who wasn't aware of the feature. It seems like once in a while, I'll keep running into developers and content authors that have never seen or even heard of this feature in Sitecore. However, it's very helpful, especially for content authors. It dramatically improves the usability of Sitecore client editing tools. So what are these parameter templates? Well, as developers, we know we have rendering and sublayout components that compose the presentation of Sitecore outside of the layout. And we also know that renderings and sublayouts have parameter section in their properties, which we can use to pass custom settings that would apply to that rendering or a sublayout. For instance, page size and number of uh, search results, for instance, um, and, and other things related to that render, uh, component on the page. However, there is a problem with that. Those fields are free form, free text entry fields. It's a list of key value uh, text fields where we define the name of the variable and we define the value of the variable and we keep on just adding them as long, for as long as we want, passing those as a query string in the rendering. We can access it in our code and act accordingly. But that is a problem. What if we could use Sitecore field types instead that come with Sitecore definition, data definition templates for creating regular fields in data definition templates in our parameter settings. Well, parameter templates allow us to do exactly that. So let's take a look at how we can set that up. Let's go ahead and log into Sitecore and navigate to the content editor. So creating parameter templates is a two-step process. So first we want to create the parameter template itself and the second is we need to attach that parameter template to the renderings that we'll be using it. So let's go ahead and create our template. Now as you can see these are the remains from the previous video about the best practice on using icons. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a special separate parameters folder templates uh, rendering parameters or I usually call it parameters let's keep it simple now if uh, when we follow the uh, component based architecture and as the solution grows what I usually end up having is the site folder underneath that I would have let's say components folder and then the list of component folders and each component folder would have its own parameters uh, folder inside. It's just an easy way to separate those out from other section uh, or component based templates. So we'll go ahead and create a new template. We'll call it a sample parameter temp template. Now instead of inheriting from the standard template, this time around we'll go ahead and inherit from the standard parameter rendering template. And I believe it's under system layout and it's under uh, rendering parameters and there it is standard parameter let's see what was the name again <laughs> standard rendering parameters so it's temp uh, sitecore templates system layout rendering parameters standard rendering parameter template okay let's go ahead and hit next and close and that should create our template and the way we build it out is just like any other data definition template in Sitecore so we'll specify a uh, section name sample uh, par, well, let's see sample temp template let's keep it different from the template name and uh, let's say let's say we are working with a search results rendering hypothetically and we need to specify a size, oh, caps lock, our page size, we'll use the integer field type, okay, and I was uh, hitting tab there and using arrow keys to pick the field type, that's why you didn't see the cursor move, and then let's say 
we'll uh, add some a multi uh, multi select field for featured items, right? Featured. Just keep it generic like that. Featured. I don't know what it is, but it is featured. <laughs> And we'll use one of my favorite fields. It's uh, tree list extended. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. That should be enough here. And just like with any template, let's go ahead and define standard values. And in standard values, we'll define, let's define a default value for the size field. Let's say 50. That seems to be the gold middle. Uh, middle. According to some research, I, I don't remember whose research, but I remember reading about it. They said it's the, the optimal search uh, number of search results per page. So that's step one. We've created our rendering template. Now step two is to create, uh, to attach the template to the rendering or a sub layout. So let's take a look. And I believe this home item is created from the default sample item template that comes with SiteGround it is. Uh, and it uses sublayouts, judging by name. We're still in what forms land by default in Sitecore. So let's go ahead and attach it to the sample sublayout. So let's navigate to the layout section, sublayouts. And there it is, sample sublayout. So once you click on it, oh, look at that. I didn't even have to scroll, but once you click on it, all you have to do is scroll just a bit and then you'll see the second field in the template settings uh, called parameter template. All we have to do is just point it to our new template that we've just created. Let's go ahead and navigate to our parameters folder, sample parameter template, save that. And that is it. So now we should be able to go to the home item, go to the properties of that sub layout and we should now see our new fields using uh, in parameters, uh, sub layout parameters using our new uh, uh, fields with type safety. Let's go ahead and go to details, sample sub layout, and here it is. So we have our sample template, which was the name of the section. We have our size, default size set to 50, and we have our featured field, which is a, an extended tree list field where we can uh, select featured items. So as you can see, this dramatically improves the experience of using parameters. Not only uh, it, in, uh, it makes it more user friendly and intuitive, it also includes validation. So we can include validation just on the fields in parameters just like we do that for regular data definition template in Sitecore. Now let's go back into the properties and if we scroll a bit further, now notice that we still have the parameters section. So we're still able to add uh, multiple, let's see, let's go complaining about the space there, multiple variables here and pass mul multiple settings. So when would we use one over the other? When would we use, or when would we want to use the freeform text entry parameters over the parameter rendering template? Well, my rule of thumb is if the setting is going to be exposed to content authors, we have to use parameter and templates for that. Content authors are not technical. And if we force them to use the freeform entry fields, we're going to have a bad time, both them and us developers. Now, if there is a setting that should be hidden from content authors, however, maybe perhaps exposed to developers or designers or more, or technically advanced uh, stakeholders, then we can use freeform entry fields. Perhaps maybe a, a hidden setting that allows some extra debugging or some extra functionality on the tool or exposes some features that aren't available by default in the rendering. So just a few ideas on the, on the type of uh, parameter settings that we can put in in the freeform entry fields. So here we go. This best practice was on using parameter renderings. Hope you uh, enjoyed the video and realized the potential and the benefit of using them in your solutions and uh, start implementing it in your Sitecore implementations. So again, this uh, was Vasily Fomichev and I'm a Sitecore Technology MVP. 
you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, put comments below on what you'd like to see in future videos. For more uh, tips like this, check out cmsbestpractices.com, and I will see you next Friday. Over and out.